Oh, going home, Ed? Why, you're not going home, Ed. Yeah, I'm going home. But you ain't been in New York three days. Well, I'll say three days is a plenty. Yeah, I'll say the same. Say, this is a slow town, that's what I say. A slow town. Yeah, there's more doing at home at the corner of Main and Elm. <laughs> no, I'll say this. <laughs> I thought it would be different, too, with all the wickedness and sin you hear tell of. Yeah, and take this here hotel now. Why, it's like an old folks' home. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'll say. Why, nothing happens. That's a lot of hooey. But nothing could happen. Well, I'm going home where I can get some real excitement. I'll say. Nothing doing here. Well... I'll be seeing you. Yeah. Come on, Ed. Oh, see, you know he's right. I think we ought to be going, too. I've been walking for hours. You've walked to the right place. Now come, sit down. Now tell me all about it. What's your trouble? Well, I, I lost my purse. All my money's in it. My trunk check and everything. I don't know a soul in the city. And if you don't help me, I don't know where to go. I don't know what to do. Well, we'll see what we can do. Where do you come from? Um... Uh, Chicago. I just got in tonight. Oh, uh, what did you do in Chicago? I was just in a, a nursery governess. Well, do you think you can get work for me anywhere? Maybe. What's your name? Uh, Martha. Martha Hunter. Just a moment. Hello? Yes, this is the neighborhood house on Rivington. Who's calling? Oh, police headquarters. Yes, we have an employment bureau. What's the name? Mary Hadfield? A stenographer? Uh, just a moment till I look through the files. No, there's no such girl on our list. You're welcome. Bye. Uh, here's a card. You sign here, Miss Hunter. Your name, age, and residence. Why, how your hand trembles. You look like you're ready to pass out. Beaumont Hotel? This way, boy. Here you are, lady. Imagine a thing like this at the Beaumont of all places. James Morton, importer, killed at 5.30 this afternoon. A woman suspected of the crime. <laughs> Why, I... Oh, you poor child. Why, I was forgetting all about you. Come now. I'm going to take you right into my room. I'm going to give you a good cup of hot tea. You know, if you get something in your stomach, I'm sure you'll feel much better. Oh, thank you, Sue. And uh, then we'll find a place for you. And everything's going to be perfectly all right. And now I'm going to take you right here into my room, and you'll make yourself perfectly comfortable and at home. Good evening. Good evening, sir. And what can we do for you? My name's Howell, John Howell of the Evening Journal. 
I'm a sobby. A sob sister, you know. Hmm? Heart inter stories. The poet and the peasant. The curse of an aching heart. Till the sands of the desert grow cold. And where, oh where, is my wandering boy tonight? If you'll excuse me, you'd better talk to Miss Rose. She, uh, she speaks two or three different languages. Good evening, Miss, uh... Tom. How do you do? My name's Howell, John Howell. I'm a... You're a reporter. Hunting a human interest story in the neighborhood house. How did you get it? I know the breed. Used to be a sob sister myself. You did? Until I decided to be something useful. Oh, they're sending a man on this kind of assignment. They generally use women. I guess they figured I could handle it. You see, half my ancestors were women. <laughs> so you've come cruising for a story to this harbor of disappointed hopes. Gee, that's a good line. Do you mind if I use it? Not at all. It was always a good line. I used to use it myself. Harbor of disappointed hopes. This isn't so hot. Do you want a job taking dictation? My, what an awful looking hand. How did you get it? I was coming out of Snyder's about three hours ago. You know, right next door to the Cafe Rossomano. And in front of the Rossomano, there was a girl who seemed to want to get into a taxi. Yeah, come here, you. Let's come here, right, Let's it. go. Gangster's glasses, if you don't believe me. What did the girl look like? She had the kind of eyes you could look into and get a moving picture of paradise. And as for this hand, well, I'll wear it to my grave. A souvenir of her. Ow! Pardon me. I, I beg your pardon. Uh, couldn't you... Uh, let me have a quarter, sir. I, I need more uh, ink uh, to finish Mr. Clavering's work. Why, uh, sure. Here. Get yourself a bucket full. Oh, <laughs> thanks. Thanks awfully, sir. Thank you. <laughs> There's your human interest. That old fellow used to be a professor of languages in one of our big universities. Until drink got him down. Now he makes a living translating for Mr. Clavering. Clavering? Winter Clavering? You mean little Nemo? I mean the man that writes the famous crime stories. Yes, yes, I know. Our paper runs his stuff. We call him little Nemo. He's full of theories about catching criminals. But they're all the wrong theories. He always connects when it comes to helping people. And your little Nemo just about supports the neighborhood house. Well, 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 where's that stenographer you promised me? Where's that stenographer? You said you'd have her here. Now, oh, Mr. Christopher, where's that stenographer you promised me to take my stories from dictation? This girl's got to live in my house. Be ready when the inspiration moves me. Sometimes she won't get out for a week. Can't do it myself. Bad hand. Bad eye. Bad liver. Fresh. I think our Miss Taylor would suit you. She's been with us on and off for a year. Huh? I'll go see if she feels strong enough to see you. Strong enough? Has she been sick? I don't want a nailing woman. I had one. Every time I'd come to an exciting place in my dictation, she'd have to stop to take a pill. Well, I'll let her know you're here. Tell her it's hard work, no time off, very little sleep. I never sleep. My mother never slept. My father never slept. <laughs> How could they with you on their minds? Maybe you're right. Ah, sweet. Very sweet. Are you fond of flowers? 
Not in the least. But I am interested in all odors. A well-trained nose is an absolute essential to a criminologist. I can smell a reporter a mile off. One, two, three, four, five, seven, eight. Yoo -hoo. I do this every hour. Keeps the blood in circulation. Nourishes the brain. The next act on the bill will be Wild Winnie Clavering, weaned on a pickle. You know what I'm going to do with you? I'm going to make you the comic relief in my new story, the one I'm writing about the Morton murder. You're in one paragraph. He ain't funny, so we throw you out. Well, well. <laughs> do you mean you've already got a theory on the Morton murder? Morton, my eye. Morton's an American name. But did you ever hear of an American wearing earrings? I examined the lobes of his ears. And there, so faint, you could hardly see them on the marks of old earring holes. What do you think of that, you fresh cub? Morton, nothing. That man was a South European traveling under an alias. That importing business of his was a blind. He was a racketeer of some sort. A gangster. Listen. In my new story, I'm going to make him the head of Schemer Marco's gang. I tell you, the Marco gang was mixed up in this Morton murder. And the key to it all lies in the Cafe Rossomano. Cafe Rossomano? That's the very place where... Say, what's the Rossomano got to do with the Morton murder? Uh, there were two phones in Morton's room. A house phone on the wall and a private phone on the desk. The private phone was found on the floor. Why? I ask you why. A bite why? Because Morton dropped it there. And he dropped it because he was stabbed in the act of using it. Yeah. Took me to think of that. Me. Little Nemo. Great, Little Nemo. I checked with Central. I found that at 5.30, the very hour of his death, Morton called the Rossmano on that private phone. That message to the Rossmano was the cause of Morton's death. Well, I'll be a... That's not all you'll be. I half you deserve to be. What's the matter with your hand? Begins to look like a bunch of bananas, doesn't it? Hey, Christopher. Do something for this poor boy. Take him into the dispensary. Put him in anarchy. Give him a dose of salt. What are you here for, anyway? Come on, sir. This way. Thanks, Pop. Don't thank me. I wouldn't let even a worm suffer. Can you hear me? Not even a worm! <laughs> Miss Taylor will see you, Mr. Clavering. She's across the hall in the ladies' reception room. Oh, she's a lady, is she? Too bad. Too bad. It's an old up lady. I don't think I'm gonna like her. I want a girl for work. Never want to sleep. Chelsea, 6887. Hello. Hello. Is that you, Uncle Mark? This is Margaret. Any word from Victor? A letter. Addressed to me. Oh, no, not from them. How did the letter come? By messenger. 
Well, get it to me at once. I'm at the neighborhood house on Rivington Street. Better bring it yourself. Have you read The Evening World? Yes, it's true. I can't explain to you now. I'll tell you when you get here. I think I'm your friend, but I'm not quite sure yet. Well, what do you mean? I don't understand you. Oh, yes, you do. You're the girl that killed that man at the Beaumont. Oh, how crazily absurd. Well, I just got in from, from Chicago this evening. Oh, no, you didn't. You were outside the Russell Manor at 5.45. Oh. Well, I have a little souvenir of our meeting. I helped you once, and I want to keep on helping you. I've got a hunch that you need help pretty bad. Hadn't you better trust me? I never was inside the Beaumont. I never killed anybody. I I'm not the stenographer. There, you've said it yourself. You're Morton's missing stenographer. Oh, I didn't do it. I didn't do it. The police would like to find you, wouldn't they? The police? Well, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? I want to tip the police off. Oh. Unless you'll tell me all about it. Will you? Well, I didn't do it. I didn't do it. Very well. Hello. Oh. Hello. Oh, no. Give me. No, no, no. Don't. Don't give me up. I'll, I'll tell you. Oh. Oh. I didn't mean to kill him. Oh, I didn't mean to kill him. Oh, oh here, here, here. Come now. Come sit down and tell me all about it. Oh, I didn't... I didn't mean to kill him. Don't lose your nerve. You'll need it. I believe I can trust you. About the best thing you can do. Now, tell me, who was that man that grabbed you outside the Rossomano? Well, one of the gang, Marco's gang. Are you one of them? I'm one of them. So I've been fighting them for four years. You fighting them? Yes, with every bit of our strength. My brother and I. My brother, Victor Holt. The assistant district attorney that's staging the vice crusade? I'm his sister, Margaret Holt. Say, what does he mean by letting a girl like you mix in a fight of this kind? Oh, he couldn't keep me out. His fight is my fight. We've got to get Schema Marco's gang because it's narcotics they peddle. And I've seen the workings of that gang with my own eyes. I've seen little girls drugged in filthy joints. Boys that beat their own mothers to get money to buy the stuff. And men and women that do things. Or even savages couldn't do. Things I couldn't speak of. Things I don't want to remember. Well, there, there. I've seen the agony and the delirium of when the stuff has stopped. And the last days of all, when the, when the poor body's broken. And nothing's left but the... Poor aching brain that suffers, can't sleep. That's what that gang stands for. That's why I made my brothers let me join in the fight. Somebody had to get close to Marco himself. After months and months, I finally got in as his personal secretary, his private stenographer. You mean that Morton was schema Marco himself, the head of the dope gang? Oh, sure. That importing business was just a blind. You plucky little kid. Gee, you'd have been safer in a nest of rattlesnakes. Well, no matter. I cut the evidence on him. But there was a list. A complete list of all the members of that gang. And I had to have that list. I couldn't find out where he kept it hidden. Not until today when... Why, Mr. Morton, you came back. I had a hunch, Miss Hatfield. I felt I should find you here, always so busy with my affairs. 
Well, I stayed behind to finish those letters. Uh -huh. uh, you're such a good little worker. I think I shall never be able to let you go. Thank you, Mr. Morton. Well, good night. Uh, wait, Miss Hatfield. Are you uh, handy with tools? Tools? Yes, I see that the edge of the carpet has become untacked. Now, if you had a screwdriver, a hammer, I mean. I'll speak to the maid about it. First thing in the morning, please. Yes, sir. Good night. Just a minute. Why are you in such a hurry? Why well, not? I'm not at all. Good. Now, will you look up a number for me? The name is Previs Love, Stanley P. Yes, sir. Will you please open that door? I'm afraid that Victor Holt will have to wait for my little envelope that you stole for him. Well, who's Victor Holt? Well, your employer, Miss Hatfield. Our famous assistant district attorney. Wait just a minute. There's a great deal you'll have to tell me later when we really get to talking. First, I'll tell you something about Victor Holt. Just now, he's at the Cafe Rosamano. Oh, so you know that name, huh? Well, I guess we'll call the Rosamano. Hello? Give me Gramercy 7980. Please. <laughs> Victor Holt thinks he's trailing my friends, but it's my friends that are trailing him. I don't know any Victor Holt. No? Hmm. Hello? Rosamano? Will you kindly ask Mr. Miller to take this call? No. Oh, so you know my good friend Miller. When he comes to the phone, I'll tell him that poor dear Aunt Louisa is failing fast. It means that my friends will take Victor Holt for a ride. Oh, no. But why? You don't know any Victor Holt. He's nothing to you. You should worry. Oh, he's my brother. My very own brother. You do what you like with me. But you shan't touch him. I shall not forget you. Presently. When this thing is settled. Hello. Hello. Is that you, Miller? No. Shut up. Hello, Miller. Oh, no. Everything is Jake. Only I just had a little bit of sad news. Yeah, you know, poor Aunt Louisa. Aunt Louisa? What's that? Hello? Boss, I can't hear you. Hello? Hello, boss. What? Oh, Help! I'm dying. She got, got me. I never... Oh, oh, my God. Oh, I had to do it. I had to do it. It was his life or my brother's. And your life, kid. You haven't thought of that, maybe. Oh, I had to get to my brother. That's all I could think of. I went down the fire escape, got a taxi to the Rossamano, and then... And then you came. Oh... Are you going to give me up? Give you up? Gee, I've been looking for you all my life. Oh, well, I guess I can trust you. Don't look at me with those eyes. Oh, Uncle Mark. Easy, easy. Who is this? Oh, well, a friend of Victor's. A friend of mine. The easiest thing I do. Have you got the letter? Yes, right here. <clears throat> Dear Miss Holt. You took a sealed envelope away from Morton's room, put that envelope with a seal unbroken in a book on the last seat, right-hand side, St. Anne's Church, before 10 tonight. If you do as told, your brother is saved, so long as you don't open your mouth. But if you bring the police into this, Victor Holt goes for a ride. What are we to do? Well, here's their envelope. 
Do just as they say and don't try to trap or trace them, will you? But what's to prevent those crooks from bumping your brother off as soon as they get back their list? Because I know too much about them and they know I'd go straight to the police if it weren't for the hope of saving Victor. How are you going to save him without police help or anything? We have to find out first where they've taken him. Oh, to Weinberg's most likely, wherever that is. Who's Weinberg? The man I grabbed hold of. The one with the glasses. Glasses? Hold everything. I've got a clue. Look here. All that's left of Mr. Winey's glasses. Mm -hmm. Did you ever see any as thick as that? It's a freak prescription. I'll call on all the optician shops. And when I find a prescription, I may find an address that has Mr. Winey at the other end of it. And when I do, that's where we'll find your brother Victor. That's a mighty slim clue, and it'll take days. Well, until we can get a better one, it'll have to do. Hello? Yes? Yes, this is the neighborhood house. Sure, come on over. And bring your knitting. What do you know about that? Police Captain McLeod. Police? Yes, coming over. Nice and friendly, too. He has a hunch that the neighborhood house may know something about Mary Hatfield. They get so many girls in here. Oh, if the police get hold of me, I'll have to tell all I know about Morton. And Victor's life won't be worth a whisper. Yes, and if the Marco gang get a hold of you, it'll be all over with you both. They'll finish you and your brother and do away with all the evidence against themselves. Now, come on and get on your bonnet. And don't walk, run. We'll have to keep that girl in a safe deposit box so we can get our hands on Victor. Where in the world can she hide? All right, go on. Go on, have hysterics. They ought to send you to the old woman's home. Have hysterics. Have them all over the place. Fine lemon they tried to hand me. Took one peek at me and threw a fit. Who are you? Just born unlucky. Got an inspiration. Got to get to work. Must have a stenographer. Need some help. Oh, so you want a stenographer. You're a mental giant. You haven't answered my question. What question? Who are you? Who are you? I won't tell you. Here you are. First class stenographer. Never wants to sleep, never wants to leave the house. Just wants to work. Ten hours. Twelve hours. 16 hours, 24 hours, 30 hours a day, mind you. Shut up. I'll do my own talking. Do you want this job? Y yes, sir. Yeah, well, come on, come on. I'll make the wages right. I'll make the wages right. Get to work. I'll get to work. It's all Jake. Yeah, he lives like Jay. a hermit. Nobody will ever find you in his house. I'll keep in touch with you. Come, come. Hurry up. Oh, say, something I forgot. Have you got a feller? A what? A feller. A sweetheart. Some poor sap will want to come calling on you and interrupt my dictation. Oh, no. I haven't any sweetheart. Good. Good. <laughs> it's great. How do you now? Come on. Well, well, my old friend Clavering, large as life. Don't stop me, McLeod. Haven't I been telling you these ten years my time is important? Oh, wait now, man, dear. Wait, wait. Don't do that. I've got the laugh on you for once. How if I said I'd got the woman that killed Morton? Yeah. No. Here's your gloves, miss. Yes, I got that woman right under my hands. All I want now is to locate that Hadfield girl, the stenographer, so she can identify her. Identify who? Hello, Jack Howell. We want the Hadfield girl to identify the foreign woman that called on Morton. We've got her under arrest. She's the one that did the murder. That foreign woman never touched him. I hope she sues you for defamation of character. There you go, little Nemo, the crime detector. Always hands me a lap. That's not all I could hand you if I chose, you big gorilla. I could hand you the true story of the crime. Baloney. I'm on my way home to write it now. Plain as the nose on your ugly face. I'll show you just how it was done. Come on. Wasn't that foreign woman? A child could see that. Always wrong at the top of your voice. What's that? You grinning chimpanzee, that foreign woman left the hotel at five o'clock. I got it from a cab driver in front of the hotel who saw her go. You don't say. It was the stenographer who killed him, the stenographer. Go on, now go on, before I laugh myself to death. I know she did it, cold-blooded cat. I'll prove it to you in my story. How she did it, why she did it, where she's hiding now. Stop it now, stop it now. I'll never let you go, not till it's all written. Can't dictate the story without you. You'll see, you'll see, the guilty woman. But I'll hand her over to you, McLeod, when my story's ended. Yes, yes, when it's ended, cold-blooded murderess. I want to see her in the chair. I'll send her to the chair. 
I'll send her to the chair. You there, honey? I heard the front door shut after that old crime eater. Then I just slipped up here with some dinner for you. Oh, thanks, Martha. But I just couldn't worry down a mite of food. Oh, well then, you ought to run out and get the air. More than two weeks you've been here sticking in the house the whole enduring time. That old devil's are working you too hard. Lordy, who is that now? Well, that's Jack. What's Jack? Now, I can't let that young man in. Well, I can, and I'm going to. If that old devil knows he's been here three times, that's going to be the end of poor old Martha. Nobody knows the trouble I see. Nobody knows the trouble I see. And out of the dark came a ghostly shriek. Mm. Mm. Nobody knows the troubles I see. Nobody knows the troubles I see. Leaving, Gallagherchi. Don't you go calling me out of my name, Buckery boy. And don't you disremember this. When Master Clavin come, you tell him you done force your way in here over my dead body. Oh, Jack. Now, what's the matter? Tell me. Oh, Jack, take me away from this place. I can't go on. I can't go on. Now, steady, steady. Oh, that awful old man. He's making me write down my own story. He guessed everything so far. So he's just a good guesser, that's all. I know, but now he's down to the actual murder. He'll find me out. No, he won't. No, he won't. He's bound to find me out. He'll hand me over to the police, and that'll be the end of my brother. No, no, don't do that. Don't do that. Oh, but I can't. Oh, I can't! I can't! I can't stand it! Listen, you've got to stand it. It may only be a matter of hours now, because I think I've located your brother. You mean you've located Weinberg? Yep. I found the shop where those thick glasses were made up. Just this afternoon, I ran across that freak prescription, but it wasn't under the name of Weinberg. There was an address. Oh, where, Jack? Where? In an old house up a court, not a half a mile from here. And you think they've got Victor hidden in that house? That's what I've got to find out. Well, how will you manage? Well, you see, it just happened to happen that the water main that serves that house went on the blink about an hour ago. Oh, Jack, you did that. Oh, you're wonderful. Well, why should I contradict you? <laughs> Listen, your Uncle Mark and I are going into that house as men from the water department. And you're going to get Victor out? We've got to locate him first. And you keep your pretty little fingers crossed. You may have some good news in an hour or so. Oh, Jack, are you going into that house now? Right this red hot second. Oh, Jack, don't go into that house. Don't try it. I can't let you. I won't let you. Gee, do I mean that much to you? I guess you do. Well, don't you worry. If I mean all that to you, I'll come out of that house. And the whole Marco gang can't stop me. I'll come back to you and your brother with me. Oh, come back to me. Well, that's Mr. Clavering. I'm scared to death. Now, keep your nerve. It won't be long now. Ah, cold. I hate the cold. I hate the cold. Who are you? Yeah. Well, well, how'd you get in my house? I told that black assassin not to let anyone in. Now, no, don't get excited, old-timer. Now, get out before I send for the dog catcher. Yeah. I'll catch her. Goodbye, my dear. Oh, be careful. Oh, do be careful. If you shouldn't come back. No, no, it'll be all right. Lally gagging, eh? I tell you, I won't have any lally gagging in my house. You get to work. You get out. One, two. Three, four, 
I just stopped in to ask you whether you'd have another I... installment of your story ready for our paper tomorrow. Fix. I won't if you keep on interrupting me this way. Twenty-three. Twenty-six. Twenty-eight. Thirty. How can I finish my story with all these interruptions? Got a new train of thought on my walk. That pup knocked it out of my head. Martha! Martha! I'm coming, I'm coming. Stop coming and get here. You call me, sir? No, you witch. I was doing vocal exercises. Now listen. That pin-headed reporter. What did you let him in here for? Well, I surely didn't let him in, boss. He just come in. Fabricator! Not for the law. I'm back. I'm back. Oh, honey, you done sprained your kink out of it. Get the kink out of it. Higher, higher, you lost it. Higher, lower, lower. Dad, dad. That's it. Dad, no. That's it. Father, rub you good. That's it. That's it. Dad, no, honey, rest your poor back. You better, honey. Say, who told you to come rubbing my back? Too darn officious. Now, where's my pipe? Got to get to work. Where's my pipe? Now, where's my pipe? Is I done see that old pipe. Stop scratching your head. You couldn't reach your brain with a steam shovel. Now, where have you gone and hid that pipe? Where's my pipe? Where's the pipe? Where? Now, here it is. Right where I left it. Rotten old pipe. Smell a bit of the shame of skunk. Smoke it in the park and all the little birds gonna drop dead. Make me sick this Stop morning. mumbling! If you have anything to say, speak up like a man. Yes, sir! Don't shout at me, you squid! Here, man. Right. Here, little present. Got it. Got a cheek. <laughs> how come you all knows I use jockey club, boy? Ah, <laughs> uh, didn't. Don't care. <laughs> that joke is nice. Come here. Come here. Come here. Now listen. The next time you let that gibbering, jabbering reporter in here, I'll wring your neck. And put you in pickle. Like this specimen. Understand? Yes, sir. I understand. Yes, sir. I understand. Yes, sir. I understand. You're going to need a bigger jar than that to pickle me in. Oh, but something come annoy me. Just when I need peace and quiet. Well, well let's get to work. Let's get to work. Where did we end that last chapter? Oh, uh, the uh, stenographer had just found the paper hidden under the carpet. Uh -huh. Well, Mr. Clavering, whatever made you think of such a thing? I discovered that three tacks had been pulled out of the carpet in Morton's room. And the dust, newly disturbed. Something had been hidden there and taken out. Oh, but uh, why a paper? They couldn't have hidden a limousine there, could they? Now we come to chapter 10. Head it. The murder. For one tense moment, they faced each other. You were sent here to spy on me, he said. Who sent you? Let's see you find out, she defied him. That's what I mean to do, he threatened. You'll talk, my lady, when the gang gets here. He caught up a telephone on the desk to summon... But it wasn't to summon. How do you know? Are you writing this story, or am I? Well, I get so interested, I keep trying to figure out the plot. I suppose so. He caught up a telephone on the desk to summon his henchman. 
Quick, he cried. Give me the Café Rosamano. Trapped and desperate, the girl looked about her. And there on a the table, she saw the gleam of a stiletto. A look of murderous purpose came into her brown eyes. What makes you think her eyes were brown? They had to be brown. Black-eyed and gray-eyed people are nervous. This girl was as cool as a cucumber. Blue-eyed people are slow thinkers. This girl's mind was as smart as a trap. Yes, she had brown eyes. Eyes just like yours. Like mine? Yes. She looked very much like you. Same eyes. Stand up. Same height. Oh, well, how did you ever figure that out? Why, she had to be the same height in order to strike the mortal blow from the angle she did. Now then. Morton was standing near the phone. He was stabbed in the left side. He must have been standing with his right side to the table, like this. Now, uh, oh yes, where were we? Oh, come here. Come here. Now take this paper knife. Go on, take it. Now you're the girl and I'm Morton. Now, where would you stab me? Go on, stab me. Why don't you stab me? Oh. Now, what is it? Now, what's the matter? Now, what, what? Will you make it all so real? Of course I do. That's why my books sell. Now, don't go fainting on me. I won't stand for it. Haven't got the time to waste. Now, get this down. Without a moment's hesitation, she seized the stiletto and plunged it into his villainous heart. Oh, thank heaven. Now, what's the matter? Oh, the doorbell rang. Let it ring. She plunged it deep into his villainous heart. Shall I go see who it is? Sit down. Shut up. How is it I must be interrupted this way? She plunged it into his villainous heart. That's not his heart. Where was I? Ah. She plunged it into his villainous heart. Now I can't dictate with this rowing. I can't even think. Who is it? What is it you want, you saber-toothed chimpanzee? You squiggly-eyed, flat-nosed daughter of ham? You, you... Why can't I think of words when I need them? When you find them, I hope they choke you. What is it? What is it? There's a lady downstairs, sir. Uh -huh. She said when you read this card, you'd see her for sure. Uh -huh. Tell her I'll be down right away. Yes, yeah, sir. Yes. Yeah. You go to your room and rest. I have a little chore to do. And maybe you can get ten minutes sleep if you're quick about it. When we come back, we'll do two more chapters, huh? Two little chapters. Run along. Cover up well. Open the window. Fresh air won't hurt you. Sweet. Very sweet. Mm -hmm. Relative of the late James Morton. I wonder what she wants. Some nuisance, I suppose. Mr. Clavering? You know I am. Well, well, sit down, sit down. No time to waste. Please. Uh, let's get down to brass tacks. 
It is a great honor that you receive me in your house, Mr. Clavering. Yeah, quite so. Now, tell me, what relation was the murdered man to you? My uncle. My good, kind uncle. Oh, Mr. Clavering, I have read in the paper your story of the murder. You could not write like that unless you know something. You say so many things that are true. How do you know? Because I am the woman that called on Mr. Morton just before he is murdered. Oh, you're the foreign woman the police arrested, eh? They had to let me go. An outrage, was it not? When it was the stenographer, she killed him. Got any proofs? Listen. Listen. I leave my uncle a little before five that afternoon. And I leave that Hadfield girl alone with him. I come back to meet my uncle about 5.30. I'm standing across the street from the hotel, and I see that stenographer come down the fire escape. That's it. That's it. That's where I'm going to end my first chapter. What then? She jump in the taxi. I jump in another and follow. She get out at Cafe Rosamano. Of course. Of course. When she get out, she dropped this purse. Yeah, let me see it. Oh, yeah. Powder box. Little money. Handkerchief. Keep these, may be useful. What then? Pretty soon I hear the newsboys calling about murder at the Beaumont. Then I know this girl, she has killed my uncle. Why come to old Grape Nuts with your story? You know so much. I am sure you'll find that stenographer very soon. And when you do, you tell us where she is. And we give you $5,000. If I get some information, where can I reach you? Well, Gramercy, 9268. Huh? Ask for Mr. Miller. If I get some information, I may call you. In the meantime, I haven't done a stroke of work today. Come, come. Ah, uh, I suppose so. It has been such a pleasure to meet such a man. Don't I know it? I come again when you send. Then I thank you myself. Goodbye. Goodbye, my dear. You almost make me feel young again. Almost. <coughs> almost. Young and the mess. That boy got run me crazy yet. Blonde hair, brown eyes, medium height. for you now. All ready. So soon? Yeah, wasted a lot of time already. Sit down. Sit down. Take a new page. Write a new chapter. 
End of chapter 11. Fight! Ready! Yes. Down the fire escape she fled. Breakneck speed, with no thought of danger to herself. With one purpose, to get to the cafe, Rossimano. Ready, taxi? Presently, the garish lights of the cafe. She had just missed him. Like a frightened animal, she fled. Up one street, down another. Into the subway, at last. When she got out, far downtown, the boys were already crying extra, all about the murder at the Beaumont. At that moment, she saw a sign. A neighborhood house! Oh, I can't go on! I won't go on! I won't! You can't leave here now! Oh, you can't keep me here! I'm not your prisoner! Yes, you are! Yes, Will you, you are! I've got you! You're the girl who murdered James Martin! I've got you! I told him I'd get you! I'm going to turn you over! The police! Oh, wait! Yes, it's true! I did it! Ah, of course you did it! Oh, but you don't know why I did it! You don't know who I am! It doesn't matter! You put down that phone. Or well, there's going to be another mystery. Do you think I'll let you give me up now? Ruin everything? Kill my brother? You sit down. Hang up that phone. Now you listen to me. It is the last thing you do. My name is Margaret Holt. I'm Victor Holt's sister. Victor Holt's sister? You mean you're the sister of the missing district attorney? Yes. We've been fighting that Marco gang. Quick, Martha, let me in, for the love of Pete. Oh, you go in here, boy. I can't let you in no how. It's a matter of life and death. Oh, that's just it. Old devil gonna kill me for sure if I let you in here again. Ow! Glory be to goodness, woman. You've ruined my foot for life. Oh, how cool. Let me in. Smash to a pulp. My right foot, too. My best one. The one I always put forward. I'll have you jailed for this, you jumping Jezebel. Look, I can't stand and I can't walk. You fooling, Massy Howell. I'm wrecked for life. I can't walk and I can't work. I'll have to sit in the gutter and bang. It ain't that bad, honey. I never did you any harm. Let old Martha see your fool. Please, Mr. Warner. Come back here, Craig. Fool old woman. I catch you, I might bust your head, not your foot, devil limb you. Mr. Clavering, now that you know the whole story, you'll help me, won't you? You'll help me save my brother. No. I won't mix up in it. No, I won't. I won't. Now, who in the... Oh, that's Jack. Oh, let him in, please, please. Uh, he may have news of Victor. Uh, Open the door. I've got the Open the door. Well, who let you in? i got to talk to this girl. Big bully. Oh, it's all right. Mr. Clavering knows everything. He's going to help us. I never said I would. I won't help you. I'll turn you over to the police. Proper ending to my story. You seem to forget me in my story. Hey, listen. We'll give you a better ending to your story. Ah. You'll leave the police out of this and stick with us. And you'll be the white-haired boy that rescued Victor Holt. Oh, have you found him? Have you found him? Yes. Your uncle and I got into that house as I told you we would. And Victor's there. We talked to him. Morse code, tapping on those water pipes in the cellar. Is the poor dear boy in any immediate danger? Yes. There are three men and a woman on guard. Uh -huh. If we can get rid of three of them, he can take care of himself. You're right. Got to lure him out of the house. I can lure him. Watch me. Watch me. I'll lure him. Where's my notebook? Where's my notebook? Martha! Where's my red? Here it is. Hey. Did you have brains enough to find out if I had a telephone in that house? Sure, it's Gramercy 9268. That's it. That's it. The very number she gave me. That mealy mouth foreign hussy. Now I got an excuse to call him. I'll lure him. All great not to lure him. How long will it take you to get back to that house? Five minutes, General. Yeah. When you see three of them come out, three of them, remember? You go in. You'll know what to do. Okay. Cut the slash. This is no love nest. Vamos. Get out. Skedaddle. Call me Spring, 3100. Ask for that dummy, Captain McLeod. Well, hell, don't stand there licking any. Oh, yes, sir. A Spring, 3100. Thank you.
Now remember, when you see three of them come out, you go in. Understand? Uh-huh. Hand him a lamp, do I? I'll hand him a jolt. Make his eyes pop out, like grapes. So you can hang your head on him. Hello, Captain McLeod. Just a minute. Hello, you flat-footed baboon. This is your little playmate, old Grape Nuts. Yeah, think you're clever, don't you? How oh, would you like the Marco gang delivered to you? All wrapped up for mailing. Mm -hmm. Well, prop your ears open and listen. At exactly five minutes to nine, be at my house with four men. Now, understand? No sooner, no later. You'll spill the beans. You'll find my front door unlocked. Plant your men in the hall, and you keep watch from the street. When you're all set, throw some pebbles at the window, second floor front. I mean pebbles, not rocks. When you see the lights go out, rush the room. And if you're late, you'll have the pleasure of attending my funeral. Goodbye, you baboon. Where's my notebook? Where's my notebook? Now, where's my notebook? Here it is, Mr. Clever. What do you mean, hiding my notebook that way? Sit down now. Don't, don't fuss me. Hello. Give me Gramercy. 9268. Regular's clockwork. Trust little Nemo if the police don't gum it up. They will. Hello. Is this Gramercy? 9268? This is Winthrop Clavering speaking. Uh-huh. I want to speak to Miller. Hello. Is that you, Miller? Well, now listen. It's exactly 8.40. Uh-huh. If you're here at my house in 10 minutes, I'll hand that stenographer over to you. Listen, bring Nita Strong with you. I want her to identify the girl. And bring another man. This girl's a dangerous character. You'll have to take her by force. Can't risk any slip-up. If you're not here in seven minutes, the three of you, you don't get the girl and the police do. Uh-huh, that's all. Goodbye. <laughs> what do you think of little Nemo now? Now, don't you worry, little fella. Old Alpha Delta won't let them get you. No, sir. Martha! 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 Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm coming. Stop coming and come. Now, the shades on that window. Put them up. Way up. Way up. Yeah, I is, sir. Now get this into your cranium. My wit? Your brain box, woman. This vacuum. I'm expecting some visitors in just six minutes. When they come, show them right up here. And you go downstairs and unlock the front door. And if you forget it, I'm a dead man. Hallelujah. Yes, and I'll come back and hit you till your bones stick through your skin. Dee, I won't mess, Cleve, and I won't forget Dee. Uh, Help me already. Already, already. That lamp, disconnected. This one, too. I think of everything. That's why I'm good. Well, now, what shall I do when they come? You go to your room and keep quiet. No matter what happens. Oh, Mr. Clavering, you will be careful, won't you? Uh -huh. You know you're not young anymore, and you're up against a hard-boiled gang. Don't I know it? Don't I know it? All the more glory. Headlines. I can see him now. Winthrop Clavering, crime detector. Sherlock Holmes, post, just a boy scout. Watch me now, watch. What's that? They couldn't get here so soon. They oh. couldn't. Oh, maybe they have. If they have, I'm a cooked goose. Don't go near that window. They mustn't see you. Let me look. It's them. They've come in a racing car. Well, they're way ahead of time. What will we do? Shh, shh. I'll recite Gunga Din at him. Be all right. McLeod doesn't fail me. Now you go in there. Oh, now you will be careful, won't you? Yes, yes. Now don't make any noise. I'll stay here and stall him until McLeod gets here. Of course, McLeod couldn't be ahead of time. No such luck. Sit 
Sit down, sit down. Be with you in a minute. Just looking for a book. Excuse me, Mr. Clavering. We have only a little time. Uh-huh. Oh, here it is. Johnson's Anatomy. Did you ever study anatomy, my dear? You should. You'd make a very handsome skeleton, my dear. You know, you have to know everything to be an author. All sorts of queer books. All kinds of queer people. This is Mr. Miller. How do you do? How do you do? I can see by your face what a good man you are. And this is Mr. Weinberg. Weinberg? Oh, I had a character by that name once in one of my stories. I had him hang. I like having him hang. Mr. Clavering, we are in a very great hurry. Yeah, yeah, yes, yes, where is the stenographer? Isn't she here? Oh, good gracious, no. But you said well, you'd have her? You don't suppose I'd keep her here, do you? Why, I'd as soon have a wildcat. She's a dangerous woman. Well, but you can take us to her. Of course, of course. Now, what in the world is the matter with Mr. Weinberg? You know, you remind me of a character in one of my stories. He was a burglar. He had cracking knuckle bones, too. But they betrayed him in the end. He was hanged. What did I do with that story? Let me see. What interest you? Yes, Is he trying to fool? Oh, he's an old fool. Patient, I tell you, be patient. Yes, Mr. Clavering. Some other time we hear the story, yes? Yes, yes, of course. Now you take us to that woman, please. Oh, you know, I'd almost forgotten. I'm yes, absent-minded. Yes, and be great about it. Yes, yes, yes. Well, I need an overcoat. Is it cold outside? Where's my thermometer? What did I do with my thermometer? Not as young as I used to be. I seem to grow older. Every year. Now, what did I do with my galoshes? I should have my galoshes. You are such a oh, clever well. man. It gives me pleasure to help you. Oh, thank you. Thank you, my dear. Good girl. Nice, good girl. Well, well. All ready now. Yes, yes. Go right along now. Oh, one minute. One minute. Something I forgot. What is it now, listen? The money. The money. Did you bring the I money? I have it. Let me see it. Let me see it. Perhaps you want to count it. Right, boy. Right, boy. That's what I mean to do. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. Oh, there are only nine here. Ten. Oh, it's all there. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. You're right. You're right. Now what you are waiting for? I want to be sure, my dear. There are no counterfeits. Oh, the money is all right. Look here. You. I have wasted all the time I'm going to waste. Get me? You take me to that girl, or... You got a gun in your pocket. You will find out what I have got. All right, go on. Go on, shoot me. Shoot me. You can't find her without me. The police will get her first. Then what will you do? Uh, what's that? Pestilent, poisonous street brats. Drawing beans against my window. Where's my cane? Where's my cane? Say, what's your record? Got to go down and give them a good thrashing. Pestering the life out of me. Weinberg. 
Oh. What did you do with Clavering? I don't know. I never touched him. Clavering! Clavering! Yeah, here somewhere. Where are you, little Nemo? cock a doo 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 <laughs> well, well, little Nemo. Now that I've handed the gang over to you, Mr. McLeod, do you think you can hang on to them with your butter fingers? <laughs> no, I can lure them. <laughs> oh, don't be too hard on me, little Nemo. <laughs> That's the stenographer. Told you I'd find her. Told you I'd find her. Get that porn, Hunty, out of my way. Come out, Margaret. Are you all right? They didn't hurt you, did they? No, no. Crushed all grape nuts. I told you I'd find her. I told you I'd find her. This is Margaret Holt. Ah, Miss Holt. Your dear brother. What do you think becomes of him now? Mr. Holt as large as life. Why not? Oh, 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 you said oh, double, double cross, cross. Double cross. No. Oh, Victor, are you all right? Quite all right. And where's dear. Uncle Mark? He took the other man to the police station. Oh, but Victor, you're all right. Oh, Quite I'm all right. so glad Sorry. to Sorry. see you. Well, how are you? Oh, Mr. Clavering, this is my brother, Mr. Holt. I uh, can't help it. And I want to thank you, Mr. Clavering. Don't bother. I need your sister to finish my so story. Glad to Come see on. You. Get to work. Get to work. This will be the biggest chapter ever written. McLeod, take your policeman and go home. Take uh, those burglars with you. Murphy, turn on the lights in the hall. Get them down to headquarters. Come on, all of them. Yeah. Drag him out. Drag him out. Uh, Stand, woman, go. Now, uh, Mr. Weinberg, crack your knuckle bones now. Uh, shut up. I'll see you uh, home. Get You'll meet the Clavering. Take Come on, on, out of here, too. Goodbye, little Nemo. See you tomorrow. Get out. Okay, Commissioner. Get out. Get out. Where are you going? You get out, too. No trying to wait. Get a pad now. Take this down before I forget it. As the beaten gangsters were led away, as the beaten gangsters were led away, our heroine turned to the young reporter and said, I love you. Rubbish! Who's writing this story anyway? <laughs>